I think I know the audience just fine. Right, guys? <laughs> don't, don't say guys. Which to me, I thought was a gender neutral term. I was sold the term guys by the US when I moved here. It wasn't something that was said in England. I was sold that term as a gender neutral term. Yep. Now well, I'm being told I gotta stop it. Terms and conditions have changed. This is me revealing myself as an occasional Joe Rogan listener. <laughs> <laughs> it's been three years since we were last Brad attacked. Attack. Attacked by Brad Wilcox. The thing that we're reacting to, was it... It was to kids, right? Yeah. So, so what was it, a youth conference? Because con he's the gen general young men's or presidency. Or youth, youth broadcast or assembly. I'm not too sure on the details. Okay. Nobody say we don't know our stuff. <laughs> <laughs> we moved on. It's not about those details. We're here for the laughs, the gags, the Banksies, the future product placements. And the recess moods for 10% off with code Samspo. Told you that was coming. Take that one to the bank. <laughs> it's magnesium in it. It makes you happier, allegedly. <laughs> yeah, so we're not we're not gonna watch the whole 45 minute video right now, right? No. We're gonna, okay, so highlights. John's done it, other people have done it. You don't wanna watch <clears throat> 45 minutes of that with, yeah. do you? I don't, um, I don't. I've given too much of my life to Brad already. Yeah. A good chunk of my morning. <laughs> <laughs> That's true, actually, and I was lying in bed last night thinking about it, so well done, Brad. Your little plan worked. I lost everything because of you. The thing is, is like, as a teenager, because I used to listen to Brad Wilcox, I saw him like at EFY or something, and was like, whoa, gospel warrior, cool guy. Like, up there with mm. John By the Way. Of course, John By the Way is the very top. Up there with John By the Way. Where is John By the Way? How come he's not a general authority? Get John By the Way in On there. On this channel. <laughs> Are you having a faith crisis? Link twice, John, by the way. I feel like I saw John, by the way, and Brad as just kind of like the same kind of like, you know, they're just, they mildly pre-influencer culture. They were like Mormon influencers. Yeah. Um, but would you, is he less big of a deal than John, by the way, was? I think he's less of the, imp like, John, by the way, is a legend, right? Am I right? <laughs> that thing about having to drive in air-conditioned comfort to get your prom dress? Oh, that hit. <laughs> And then I think Brad Wilcox was kind of like, because mm. eh. John, Wanna by the way, John. yeah, exactly. And he had some more general appeal, I think, got invited to speak in conference or something. I don't know. He's a general yeah. authority now, right, yeah. right? At any rate. But the thing is, is, I just think it's so weird. Those types, like as a teenager, I thought they were so cool. And I'm like, oh, you're an adult who hasn't learned how to reason like an adult. And your only sense of being cool and fun and... Is you know, like spiritual is like teens. In, yeah, like is roasting straw man versions of what you think teens think. Yeah, it's like more cringy than a youth pastor because that yeah. youth pastor can at least turn that chair around. Yeah, <laughs> pull up in the circle, but he's up there with suit and tie, <gasps> brothers. <laughs> like, yeah, youth pastor oh. can like play the guitar. He's like, listen. I smoked back and, in the 70s. Okay. And Brad's like, if you play the guitar in a meeting, I will personally cry. So it seems like uh, Brad, you know, he's like a Mormon teen influencer, but then he's also <laughs> got that GA, like he, he toes the line and stays like stuffy enough that he's still in with the... Yeah, he's not writing song parodies. No. <laughs> Is John By the way? Yeah. Is he? He was like one of my original song parodies. He does songs? Yes. He gets that. That's door. why he's a legend. I mean, John, by the way, has probably said some. I'm sure he. I mean. No, John, you know, by the way, would never. Given the situation. Be problematic. But I like to believe that he wouldn't wouldn't do what we're about to discuss. What was Brad. You know, like, okay, I feel like each big person in Mormonism will have kind of like their thing that they're famous for, like a book or a talk, or mm. like, what's what was Brad's thing prior to the whites gate <laughs> <laughs> he's an associate professor oh, did in the you see department there's a picture of, of john by the way it was like were you looking for john by the way <laughs> he's like you think you're looking for brad wilcox <laughs> but what we know is that you're actually looking for john by the way <laughs> Okay, so he's a professor in the Department of Ancient Scripture at BYU. He speaks at Time Out for Women events, very on brand. All women yeah, need to be put he, in Time Out. That's time his policy. Out. He is the author of The Continuous Atonement. The Continuous Atonement. Oh, yeah. oh, and uh, the BYU devotional, His Grace is Sufficient. Oh, yeah, I remember that one, or I at least remember loving that one. Moral of the story, Brad's got four children and eight grandchildren, so he's doing a really good job at the plan of salvation. It's amazing that someone who gave a, t like a notable talk about grace can be so graceless, <laughs> you know what I mean? It takes a lot to make me gasp, you know, from mo like most things that people on Twitter are really angry about that a church leader has said, I watch it and I'm like, yeah, 
And then this one, I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> like, I could not believe he went there. Usually, if I see a churchy thing, because usually in my day-to-day, it's I've kind of, like, blocked out my personal mm-hmm. stuff from Mormon things. But stuff like this is, like, all over Twitter. Like, everybody's just being like, mm-hmm. what the, 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 the. Normally, I'll, if I see something, I'll be like, ooh, and I'll start, like, Gears will start training. I'll be like, actually, not my circus, not my monkeys. I'll worry about that on Tuesdays. I'll filming day. Not my circus, not my monkeys is <laughs> the only phrase. <laughs> the only one that it's, as far as I'm It's really everything. But that one I saw, and I think for the first time in a long time, I was actually speechless. I yeah. was just like... We come to you speechless. <laughs> what? Speechless voices for the voiceless. Uh-huh. Let's hear Brad's voice. Are you ready? Yeah. He's okay. he has just nailed the like edge of a wine. I'm gonna start shouting and be dynamic. Just oh, exactly that. Wow. How do you have such good jowl control at such a young age? <laughs> you By just, growing up idolizing so extremely jowled men. <laughs> so the, the Brad really had a heyday out there. It wasn't just one subject. He, there was some big oh, ones. Brad Obviously, hit on the racism just he knocked that one out of the park. <laughs> out, yeah, he really did. It's like couldn't have if fucking up were written. baseball. <laughs> I, I it's again cut out all of me being like <laughs> I'm gonna leave that in. That's kind really of nice so yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's watch ourselves a merry little clip miss. <laughs> How come the blacks didn't get the priesthood until 1978? What's up with that, Brother Wilcox? What, Brigham Young was a jerk? Members of the church were prejudiced? I love his impression of youths. <laughs> hey, man. What's up with that, Young Brother just Wilcox? just a jerk. <laughs> Wear a leather jacket, have a cigarette. Smoke one out for jerky Brigham. <laughs> I really feel like the blacks is really just like such a good litmus test right off the bat. It's like, okay, you're a professor at BYU and one of the church's <laughs> biggest problems, as I'm sure you know, because you're talking about it, is is race and the priesthood and just racism <laughs> generally, you know, growing awareness. It's a, a ever more relevant topic in sort of mainstream society. Just comes right out the gate with the blacks. <laughs> you know, the he blacks. has... He has- he has the dear black, black friends, capital B black. He's on his he apology. Did you see that? He doesn't have any black friends. I was like, name one. <laughs> He's like so far beneath even the bar for that. <laughs> I love this guy in the corner who for this whole bit is just like scratching his head like, I can't believe this. What am I? He's already, he's writing the apology. <laughs> <laughs> maybe instead of saying, why did the blacks have to wait until 1978? Maybe what we should be asking is, why did the whites and other races have to wait until 1829? You're really making this about a black issue? Let's think about the real victims here. Let's think about white people. His whole demeanor, <laughs> very off-putting. It, you can tell it bothers him. Like he's not coming across like someone who's like s- sat with the issue. You know, he's, his, his very wounds superficial are on display, you know what I'm flip- frivolous approach to the whole and topic. And implied, this is, I know, like, you guys will know this, I'm just, I guess I'm just trying to put words to, like, why every single part of this is so uncomfortable, but, like, implied in this uh, this presentation of it as, like, hey, maybe, was Brother Righam just a racist? He's casting the people that are bothered by racism as, like, the unreasonable, slovenly ones, you know? And then he's casting himself as like the intellectual with the answer. And the answer is <laughs> that white people have had it just as bad. <laughs> Actually worse since the year zero all the way to 1,820, they had to wait. Black people could wait just a couple hundred more years. First of all, plays it off like, oh, Brigham, you're going to tell me that Brigham Young was just a jerk. That was it instead of God's divine timing. Brat. <laughs> It's like as if the church hasn't already published an essay that has like at least tacitly, passive aggressively denounced Brigham Young, though of course they can't outright be like, we admit that the prophet said some bullshit stuff. Instead they're like, we condemn any theories different than the one currently given. Whether we said them or whether we didn't, but we're not we, we're not saying that we did. What's so absurd about his thing of like, yeah, people come to me and they're like, was Brigham Young just a jerk? Is like, actually like, maintaining faith in the church 
as an organization demands that you believe that Brigham Young was a jerk. That's kind of the best case scenario. <laughs> yeah. That's actually what you need to be teaching Brown if you want people to be able to resolve the issue of racism in the church, because otherwise you're just saying that God was racist. Mm. But but he is saying that, right? Because he made some comment about like um, so, like God given timing. So he's impl- he's saying that like God chose to not give black people the priesthood, which is revealing that he clearly believes in like a racist god and is a racist even him saying like the blacks there's a world where we could be like okay he's we old ha- we he have doesn't said know the blacks the in our you know yeah 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 because that's like the way it's talked about commonly so you know whatever but it's like you think that god was behind this priesthood ban so you think that god was racist you think that god differentiates between the races in that way like so it doesn't matter what apology you give. It's like your stance on that hasn't changed in two days since there was like massive outcry online. Right. Like you just s- said the quiet part loud or you just revealed your racism. But the church's like official position is they don't say whether it was like Brigham Young or God. They do don't they? name anybody. Yeah, they're they just, just like, say... for whatever reason, the black people couldn't have the priesthood. I feel like the race in the priesthood essay isn't pinning down like it's because god said so it's just kind of like we don't really know but we trust in god's overall plan so again by by trying to be like the he's saying the priesthood ban was from god and brigham young wasn't a jerk right which is not gonna serve them well you need (laughs) to allow you need members to be able to think brigham young was a jerk and that's why all that bullshit happened because him as a man was a jerk it's not because god is right because no one wants to who wants to believe in a racist god only racists and who's (laughs) leaving the church people who don't want to be part of a racist church Uh like god (laughs) there's like you know just normal conventional racism where you're like oh the people who live in that country of that color skin you know they're bad people we don't want them coming over here they do bad, that. They bad, do right? That. But Mormons take it to the next level of being like, it's not just that we don't like you and you know we're in a, we're fighting over resources or whatever. It's God literally doesn't like you. You're not even the You're same as me. You're not even human as human eyes. as are. You have a different bloodline. You belong to a different kind of thing. Religion and blood. Like I feel like religious people in like American Christianity, we had like the whole satanic panic. There's there's so much like folklore around like the Satanists, the uh, anti-Christians, they're doing all these like blood sacrifice rituals. And it's like, you guys are the ones that are obsessed with blood. Like we're not talking about (laughs) blood really. It's on your mind constantly. Yeah. Like it's in your scriptures, it's in your songs. That's that's the thing. It's like all all their their demons are in their own Uh, minds and all their skeletons are in their- The inside the house, Brad. (laughs) And he's live streaming you. It's so true. Yeah, you're worried about you're worried about predators. Look in the church. You're worried about blood atonement. Look in the church. Blood. So, Brigham Young. Blood atonement. Yeah, ah, right? that's an easy. <laughs> that's just one thing. <laughs> so child brides. There's another. Like people are like, oh well, he was just a product of his time. And it's like, no, he's like literally way worse. Like there were people who were so much better. They were like active abolitionists at the time. Like the civil war is going on in Brigham Young's time. And Brigham Young is on the, on the side that's being like, no slavery is actually good. Let's keep it. And the thing is, it's not just Brigham Young. This is the whole church leadership at the time. We kind of like put it all on Brigham Young because yeah, he was the Lord's prophet or whatever. Uh, So this is a whole church wide thing. And we're going to get familiar with some of them, which brings us to a new segment. Surprise game show. This is a show called Who Said It? A General Authority or Confederate General? All right, let's start our quiz. Who said this, Samantha? A prophet or a Confederate leader? I do not believe that the people of the North have any more right to say that the South shall not hold slaves than the South have to say the North shall. Is that a General Authority or a Confederate General? I'm gonna have to say a Confederate General Tanner. All right, let's check the answer. Incorrect. This quote is from the prophet of the restoration, Joseph Smith. The full quote says, the first mention we have of slavery is found in the Holy Bible. And so far from the prediction being averse to the mind of God, slavery remains as lasting monument of the decree of Jehovah to the shame and confusion of all who have cried out against the South in consequence of their holding the sons of Ham in servitude. Joseph Smith was a huge fan of slavery. One of the institutions of Jehovah, just like polygamy or 
blood atonement or getting baptized when you're eight years old. Actually, Tana, one of the reasons the Mormons were so persecuted was because Joseph Smith was so anti-slavery and was such an anti-racist <laughs> champion, activist, oh, fighter. I have heard that in I real know, life. That I is know. so sad. Next quote. You must not think from what I say that I am opposed to slavery. No, the Negro is damned and is to serve his master till God chooses to remove the curse of Ham. Final answer? Yep. You are correct! This is the man of the hour, Brigham Young. Next, hit me. Our slaves are black, of another and inferior race. The status in which we have placed them is an elevation. They are elevated from the condition in which God first created them by being made slaves. So, prophet or confederate leader? That one, I think, confederate leader. You are correct! This is by Confederate leader James Henry Hammond. I bet there's a lot of statues of that guy. All right, next one. As a mere historical fact, we have seen that an African servitude among us, confessedly the mildest and most humane of all institutions to which the name slavery has ever been applied, existed in all the original states and that it was recognized and protected in the fourth article of the Constitution. Prophet or Confederate leader? That's probably prophet. Incorrect! This quote is by President of the Confederate States of America, Jefferson Davis, but reads just like a Mormon general authority from yeah. the same time, I was don't it? Say, what did we learn? Indistinguishable. <laughs> we recognize the fact of the inferiority stamped upon that race of men by the Creator. I'm gonna go with Confederate General. Correct! All right. Not only was Cain called to suffer, but because of his wickedness, he became the father of an inferior race. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you got it. There's, should I keep that reading just for- That burned into my soul. Big faith <laughs> crisis one, that one. This is Joseph F. Or Fielding Smith, Oh, okay. Sorry. He became the father of an inferior race. A curse was placed upon him, and that curse has continued through his lineage and must do so while time endures. They have been made to feel their inferiority and have been separated from the rest of mankind from the beginning. What? Joseph F. Smith was just some jerk? <laughs> <laughs> what? Every single prophet we've ever had has just been a jerk? <laughs> no. <laughs> All right, well, we did it. Yay. Who is keeping score? I'll find out. Let's do two different reactions. <laughs> I bet Brad would play that game though and be 100% he's like, oh yeah, I know all of these guys. I love these guys. <laughs> really uncomfortable that your phone screen is Mark Zuckerberg. Uh, I know we've probably yeah, talked about this on the channel before. I'm trying to... It just seems like it's a, not a strategy that's working for you, so maybe just put some flowers there instead. It would make all of our lives better. It's to startle me and to prevent me from using Instagram no. so foolishly. Written I on his Tana, head. He's just creating a dopamine release every time he sees Mark Zuckerberg's face. So now when he sees it off the phone, he's going to associate it with. It's not dopamine. It's it's the bad chemicals. It's the like clenching. Ugh, it's ones. still wiring your nervous system, and it's going to want to repeat that. And no, it doesn't want to repeat every time it's aversive. Written on his <laughs> okay, forehead Tana. is the line from the Mary Oliver poem. Show me your screen time report and prove it. What is it you plan to do with your one wild and precious life? Is it to fill Mark Zuckerberg's coffers to line his pocketbook with my attention? I think not. Follow us on Instagram, <laughs> self on the shelf <laughs> underscore. Yeah, I feel like I just went on a run or something and now I'm just like... <laughs> but all along the way were people hitting me with bats. <laughs> of bad ideas. Oh. Of brad ideas. <laughs> When you said bats, I was like, brat. <laughs> it's time to go over to Patreon and warm our cockles on something lighter. <laughs> Equally disturbing, but, you know, packaged into a fun 80s romance story. Yeah. Romance. <laughs> uh, a, a very generous word for as what's actually man, happening like, here. As Brad is capable of romance. Oh, man, this is the kind of stuff that... This is this Brad is Wilcox, Brad, yeah. actually. <laughs> yeah, Sam, the main character in this book is Brad Wilcox. It's a metaphor. Support us on Patreon. <laughs> Any amount that you pledge, you get access to all of our Sam series. We're on like chapter 12, so you've got like 12 videos you can binge, which would be a huge draw for me as a YouTube addict. Anyway, that's the end. What do you guys think of Brad? Let us know in the comments. Love you. Bye. Bye.